Welcome to another video. So today we will be talking about some questions asked in Gate Life Sciences from the biochemistry section. Now this is not only very important for your Gate examinations, but equally important for other entrances like your BARC examination and for CSIR NET. So do stay tuned till the end of the video. This series is basically based on technique as well as biochemistry problems so that you can solve these MCQs very easily. Now, in this particular top video, I will be talking on the topic of enzyme kinetics. Okay, so I have planned to make this video in three different parts. The first part, we will discuss problems based on KM and Vmax. The second part, we will talk about specific activity of an enzyme, how to calculate it, how to calculate turnover number. And in the third part of this video, we will be talking about the enzyme inhibitions and how to solve sums based on them and how to graphically also predict what type of inhibition it is. Okay. So stay tuned till the end of the video. And I would like to say thank you to this person who requested this video. So thank you for asking for this video and continue commenting. I love reading your comments. So without much further ado, let's get right into the video. So the first question is, if the substrate concentration is equal to one half of the KM, that means they are saying S is equal to one half of the KM. Then the initial velocity of the reaction will be dash. Now initial velocity means V0. For those who already know this sum, you can skip timestamps and go to the other question. This one would be slightly basic. The upcoming second and third videos will be of the higher level. Okay. Now. Let us try and understand from where this is coming. This problem actually comes from the MM equation. That is the michaelis menten equation. What is the equation? The equation is that V0, that is the velocity of a reaction, is equal to V max, that is maximum velocity, into the substrate concentration S divided by Km plus S. Okay. Now, Km is called as a Michaelis maintained constant and it basically also tells you to, helps you to understand the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. We'll learn more of this in the next video. For now, we are going to use this equation to solve the questions. Okay. Now, what are they asking you? Initial velocity and they have given you the substrate concentration. So quite simple, wherever you see the substrate concentration, just put out this. Okay, so instead of the Vs, I'll put up half of Km. Then in the denominator, we have Km plus S again. Okay, now S you have. So instead of S, you will be writing again 1 by 2 Km. Okay, now this you will multiply so 2 km plus 1 km 3 km by 2 and on top we have v max this is half of km so the half would come here in the denominator and finally this would get cancelled out also km will all get cancelled out so what we have remaining is v max by 3 so v0 equal to v max by 3 if you divide 1 by 3 that comes out to be 0.33 of v max so this is our correct answer. That is option B. Super simple. Oh, this one requires more of little understand. Now let us try to understand. They have given you two red residues, glutamine 76 and aspartate 52. Okay. Now the PI is given as, so the PI for both have been given to us 5.6 and 4.5 okay now what they are saying this is a very important line the enzyme functions when glutamate is protonated and aspartate is in the deprotonated form so for the enzyme to be active glutamate should be protonated and aspartate should be deprotonated now, what do you mean by protonated and deprotonated? So, every enzyme has this basic two 
groups that is COOH and NH3. Correct. Now protonated means that sorry. So this is NH2 and COOH. Protonated means that there will be an H plus over here. Okay, so this will become NH3 plus CCOOH. This is protonated form, right? What will be the deprotonated form of this if this carboxyl group loses the hydrogen? So it becomes COO minus and this will remain as NH2, right? So this is the bitter ionic form where there is no charge. When there is a positive charge, it's called as protonated. When there is a negative charge, it is called as deprotonated. So we require glutamate to be protonated and the other residue to be deprotonated. So now when does the amino acid be neutral? That is no charge, bitter ionic form, when protonated, when deprotonated. To understand this, I have a very simple trick. So there is a relationship that when pH is equal to pi, we know that it will be in the Zwitter ion form, correct? That is positive and negative, both the groups are present, correct? So that is for this part, when pH is equal to the pi. Now, let us discuss what happens when the pH is basically less than the pi, okay? Now, I'll give you a trick to understand this, see. When the pH is less, what does that mean? That it is very acidic. That means there is lot of H+. Plus. Now, if there is a lot of H+, plus over here, what do you think will happen to this structure? There is a lot of H+. Plus. So, yes, this particular residue will have to take up that H+, plus because nitrogen has a lone pair that it can use to bond with H+. Plus. So, you will get this NH3+. Plus. And what is the charge on this? amino acid, now it will be positively charged. You can understand it this way also, that at a low pH, you already have a lot of H plus ions. So then this COOH won't lose its H plus because there is already a lot of H plus. And therefore, the residue will be positively charged only. So when the pH is less than the pi, the residue will be positively charged. Now let us try and solve this question. So it says that the pH is, uh, pH is not given. They say that the pi is 5.6 and these pH values we have to find which would be the exact pH for the optimum activity. Now you want glutamate to be protonated. That is you want it to be positively charged. Just now we discussed for it to be positively charged, the pi should be greater than the pH. Now the pi is 5.6. So we require the pH to be less than 5.6. Now you can easily cancel out those options where the pH is basically greater than 5.6. So where is it? You have option C that can be cancelled out because it's greater than 5.6. Also, you can cancel out 5.6 altogether because if it is 5.6, then that means that this will be a Zwitter ionic form, that is no charge. Now, amongst the two other options. Next, a residue, they are saying aspartate should be deprotonated, meaning it should be actually negatively charged. And when would this be negatively charged? Opposite condition, when pH is greater than the pi. So what is the pi? 4.5. Now we have to search a pH that is greater than 4.5. So this is equal to 4.5. That means this will be in the normal Zwitter ionic form, no charge. So this won't do. Finally, you get your answer. That is option D. So it's a very easy question if you know the concept. Let's go on to the next one. So this is that part of gate questions where you do not get options. You have to directly input the value. And trust me, these kind of questions are really very simple. Okay. So let us see the fraction of maximum velocity V max. What will be the value if S is equal to 4 of km? Now I have already given you the formula. So you can substitute and try, pause the video and try it and then see the solution. So now we know the formula V0 equal to V max into S upon 
km plus s directly they have given to us that s is nothing but 4 of km so add it up over here and here also you will add 4 km now this would come out to be 5 km this will be v max 4 v max into km km gets cancelled out what remains is 4 by 5 which is nothing but 0.8 so 0.8 V max. So the answer is 0.8 V max. But what they are asking you, an enzyme in the following reaction. Okay, this is asked. And finally, the fraction of fraction of maximum velocity will be obvious. So fraction means what basically they are talking about V0 upon V max. It's a fraction of maximum velocity, right? So V0 upon V max is 0.8. So you will input the value 0.8. So simple, you'll easily get two marks for this. Next one. This is also a good question, again, of the same type. Now, look at it. It says that the initial velocity, V0, we have just saw, is only one-fourth of its Vmax. One-fourth, that is one-fourth of Vmax. If the substrate concentration is... 3 into 10 raised to 3. So, substrate concentration is 3 into 10 raised to minus 3 millimolar. So, millimolar to molar, what is the conversion? You are going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So, you will multiply by 10 raised to minus 3. So, the value is 3 into 10 raised to minus 6 molar. Why am I doing this conversion? Because you have to find the Km value in micromolar and this is milli. So, for that reason, it's better to keep it in its conventional units. Finally, they have asked you to find Km. Again, the same formula, V0 is equal to Vmax into S upon Km plus S. So, instead of V0, you can put 1 by 4 of Vmax. This is again Vmax. S value is given 3 into 10 raised to minus 6 upon km value is not known and this is again 3 into 10 raised to minus 6. Cancel out V max. Okay. So now what happens is 4 goes to that side. It becomes 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 and km plus 3 into 10 raised to minus 6. So what is km? Km is equal to 3 into 10 raised to minus. So sorry, it should be 12 here. So, Km is equal to 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 6. Take the common powers. So, when you minus 12 by minus 3, the answer comes out to be 9 into 10 raised to minus 6. But this is in molar. Remember, what they have asked you in micro. So, we know that 10 raised to minus 6 is nothing but micro. So, the value of Km is 9 micromolar. So, simple. For this, you get 2 marks. Okay. Come on. Again, very simple. You can pause this video and try this out also. These, these questions I have given to, you know, give you some confidence that it is not that hard and you can easily do it. Now. What at what S? So again, substrate concentration is asked. Is the velocity 25% of the Vmax? So 25% basically means 25 by 100 of Vmax. And you can write this as 0.25 of Vmax. So we basically just got this relation that V0 equal to 0.25 of Vmax. Substitute in our formula. So instead of V0 here, now you can substitute 0.25 of the Vmax. So, 0.25 of Vmax and here it, there was Vmax into S upon Km plus S. So, Vmax gets cancelled. When this goes over that side, it becomes 0.5 Km plus 0.25 into S equal to S. So, what is the value for S? So, when this goes to that side, it will become S minus 0.25 S, which is equal to 0.25 km. This is 0.75 of S is equal to 0.25 km. 
So your answer has km and you have to find s. So keep s at one side. This will be 25 upon 75 km, which is 5 ones are and 5 fives are and this is 3. So 1 by 3 km. So that comes to be our option C. So option C is the correct answer. Okay. This question, very easy one. Okay, I will quickly go over this one. I will suggest you to, you know, pause the video and look at it. It is really very, very easy to understand. Now, here they are giving you that the reaction velocity of 10 micromole per minute when the substrate concentration equals to its Km. So, Km is equal to S. The maximum velocity for this enzyme is question mark. So, all you need to understand is that Km is equal to S and V0 is 10 micromole per minute. Okay, if you get this, you will easily be able to find it. So, I want you to leave the answer down in the comments for me so that I can look at it and hopefully you're getting to solve this. So, this was asked in 2020 only. So, you can easily put two marks in your pockets. Now, coming to something a little bit different than what we were discussing now is the line weaver Berg plot. Now, what is the line weaver Berg plot? Basically, when you rearrange the line weaver equation, you will basically, the sorry, when you rearrange the Michaelis Menten equation, you will get the line weaver Berg plot. Now, what is basically the arrangement of the line weaver Berg plot? So, let us write down the equation. It is very important for you to remember it. So, do keep it in mind. The equation for line weaver is 1 by V0 is equal to Km upon Vmax into 1 by S plus 1 upon Vmax. Now, I have written this, this equation in this form because this is basically your equation for a straight line. The equation for the straight line is y equal to mx plus c. So, this is your y which we have plotted on the y-axis. This is x you have plotted on the x-axis. So, right here. And this is basically m. Now, what is m? m here is basically it's called as the slope. Okay. And what is 1 upon V max? It is the C. That is the Y intercept. Okay. So, Y intercept will give you the value of 1 by V max. So, this is the Y intercept where this line cuts the Y axis. So, this 1 that you can see 1 minute per millimole is basically the value for 1 upon V max. So, 1 upon V max is equal to 1. So, therefore, what is Vmax? Here we get Vmax is equal to 1. Now, if you want to find the x-intercept, the x-intercept gives you basically the value of minus 1 by km. So, wherever this line cuts the y-axis, that particular value is going to give you the minus 1 by km. Okay. So, the x-intercept is equal to minus 1 upon km. Therefore, what will be Km? Km equal to minus 1 upon the x-intercept. Now, in this particular question, the x-intercept is minus 0.5. So, if you calculate, this comes out to be 2, right? So, Km is 2 and Vmax is 1. So, wherever you find any other equation, just cut it off. Vmax is not 5, we found it's 1, so cancel. Km is 2, that's correct, but Km is not 0.25. So, now we have two potential options with both say this particular statement that Km is 2. Okay. Now, the next one is about basically the inhibition. Now, it is another very easy way to check for it. You don't even have to read the later half because look at the units. It's millimole per minute and millimole. Now, what is your x-intercept? It's millimole per minute. You just took a reciprocal. So, that's moles, uh, millimole only, the per goes away, right? So, this is our correct answer. But just for the sake of it, let's read the 
you know remaining equation that is km increases and vmax unchanged and that is absolutely correct for a competitive inhibition for competitive inhibition km is equal km basically would increase and the vmax would remain the same okay coming to the last question that is the substrate saturation profile of an enzyme is given to you in this graph they are asking you what will be the order of the reaction between 0.8 to 1.4 molar that is 0.8 comes right here 0.8 and this is 1.4 molar so between this range what is the order looks like such a hard question this is hardly a like you know a 10 second solve so what is the logic behind this if you have carefully read your michaelis maintain equation you will know that what happens what is the actual meaning of the graph that look initially when there is low concentration of substrate what we observe when the concentration of substrate is low the value of the initial velocity exponentially increases with the increase in the substrate concentration so as substrate concentration increases the initial velocity also increases okay and this where do we get to find the increase in concentration so it is depending on this substrate the rate of the reaction the velocity it's only dependent of the substrate means it is a first order reaction so at low concentration this particular reaction is a first order reaction however after some time you can observe that at higher concentration of substrate you no more can see a linear increase after a time the line gets plateaued that means at high concentration there is a no significant increase in the v0 the velocity with increase in substrate concentration that means now it is independent of s and this actually is corresponding to the zero order reaction right the zero order so look over here they say 0.8 to 1.4 and this is exactly where when the substrate concentration is high so our answer is obviously a zero so hopefully this video was helpful and for those of you who already knew it hopefully it was a good practice and a revision do stay tuned from the for the next video based on km kcat values so i will come up with those those may be slightly a bit of a level up hopefully this is helping you don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel i'll see you in the next video bye